<laughs> yes, sir. New pod in the new digs. I guess last one was also new digs. I guess that came out today or it's going to come out in a couple minutes, but this is the newest of the digs, the diggiest, the Stephaniest. Getting diggy with it. We're getting diggy with it. Oh, I'm sitting, I'm sitting on my court right here. Running dig routes with Stefan Diggs, doing the shovel dance. I'm all over my court right here. Hold on. Okay. Nothing like good touchdown dance. Celebrations. Yeah, it's like to score a touchdown is one thing, but then to get in the end zone and then do a really like the because it you could flop on your dance. You set culture a little bit with those dances. <laughs> Seriously, <laughs> it's a lot of responsibility. That's a target within the target man. right there. Yeah. And the best ones are authentic, right? Mm-hmm. I th- I had, it's funny. I had like a very similar thought cross my mind whenever I saw Justin Jefferson score <laughs> <laughs> this Sunday. He was, I don't even know what he was doing, but he wasn't gritty and he was doing some other, other sort of dance. Really? Yeah. <laughs> then like that thought crossed my mind. I'm like, he's got to have a whole like arsenal of dances to do and also know that on the back end, this is going to be in like the dance that people are going to be doing like in culture now, like all the kids and high schoolers and people, people playing peewee football. Right. I'm about to hit him with this. <laughs> I'm about to set the wave of what's the dance, what's the celly. He almost shouldn't even be thinking about that. Oh, yeah. No. How could he not? <laughs> he <laughs> has to. He, ha- he has to. Yeah. He has to think about that. It's because it's the super true in his story. I wonder which at which point did the gritty was the last authentic gritty. Just like pure joy. Oh! <laughs> like, what was when do you think the last the last true gritty was? Before it became commercialized. Oh, okay, but before it became popularized? Yeah, because there's a point where it was, like, beyond <laughs> popular, you know what I'm saying? Like, everybody's hitting the gritty, like... Everyone knows what the gritty is. Yeah. Score yeah. a touchdown, do a dance. For a while, him and Jamar Chase were just doing that, and it wasn't like every kid in the world was hitting the gritty. Yeah, but when, when did that start? Like, their like, so, like rookie year, sophomore year? This is Justin Jefferson's third season or fourth? I think it's their third because their first one was 2021, I'm pretty yeah. sure. Yeah, I'm pretty sure it's their third. So, yeah, probably around their rookie season, I would assume, right? I'm pretty sure. Or what, did John Morant do it first? No talent. No talent. <laughs> Jaws was different. Jaws was huge at that time. Jaws was huge. Yeah. John Morant. It all was going down. At, not Well, I think it was, was all going down around the same time. I think so. They were kind of like driving each other. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it was definitely. I saw the link between the two. I thought there was a bridge there. Yeah. I was like, oh, they're probably talking about this shit. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> probably in a group chat. <laughs> Like, what do y'all want to do? What do y'all want to? What dance do y'all want to popularize? I don't. I don't think so. I think not to that degree. <laughs> <laughs> On the next one, maybe. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Well, the thing is, too, it's like I think the best thing to do would be to know all the dances from all the songs that everybody's doing, and then there'd be like a feel for it. You'd be like, oh, I just gave him that. Ugh. You know what I'm saying? Like, and it would like really make sense. And that okay. it's actually it would hit hard yeah. instead of being like, I'm gonna go in there. I'm gonna go with the. We're gonna do the. Ah, we're gonna bring that one back. You know what I'm okay, saying? Okay, yeah, the Cam Newton. <laughs> yeah, yeah, <laughs> yes. But like Stefan Diggs, I feel like his was just I'm digging Stefan Diggs, baby. Like that was real. That That's was authentic. Get, yeah, that was. That... <laughs> you can't take that away. Yeah, I hit that in in real football a few times. I remember the first time in real football. Okay, doing dances were getting kind of popular. Or like Diggs was doing that, and I was like, "That's tight, bro." Mm-hmm. And then I was like so nervous. I scored like a 60 yard touchdown just on like a go route. And I got in the end zone, and there was nobody around me. And I was like, I'm going for it. <laughs> Threw the ball. <laughs> so I dig in and then hit that thing. And then the ref was like, okay, okay. Well, there ain't nobody to celebrate with you because you got ran them all, but I see you. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, thank you. Tud, bro. I that. I was nervous. There you go. Yeah. It's like, okay, he did the thing. What's he going to do now? <laughs> yeah, all eyes on this guy, right? Yeah. Okay, yeah he just did the thing. It's easy just to praise God. That's, it. Praise That's God. an easy one. Praise God. But yeah, if you're trying to get a little, little, little silly with it, a little silly with the silly. Come on, I'm saying it's a cool. It's a target within a target. It's like, oh, I'm mm-hmm. here now. What am I gonna do? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah, it's a different, a different main stage. With the celebrations, Gesicki. You remember when Gesicki gave the the gritty back to Jamar Chase? I think. Mm-mm, what do you mean? Like there was a point where. I don't know if they were playing against each other. I thought maybe they were, but there was a point where Mike Kosicki scores a touchdown and then proceeds to do the gritty, and it was like... His gritty? It was it was tough, bro. <laughs> tough look. Tough. And I don't know if it was like genuinely he was trying to hit that dance, but I thought he was like kind of making fun of them. But then after that, he was definitely making fun of himself for a while. It just like I saw that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, going crazy. I first I remember that. That was like last year, right? Was it two years ago? Uh, I want to say it was probably two years ago. Yeah, that had to be two years ago. 
So yeah, at that point it was like pretty. It's been huge. You know what I'm saying? Gigantic. Yeah, I was watching Hard Knocks. What part of what made me think about all that was that I was watching Hard Knocks, and then there's a point where the Bears are playing the Bengals, and the Bears defense is just like locking up the Bengals, and then uh, one of the defenders like gets another swat or something like that, or knocks the ball loose, and he gets up and he's like, "Ah, look at him!" and he starts doing the gritty like at Jamar Chase, mm. and then I was like, "That's crazy." That that probably happens to him all the time. Yeah, <laughs> everywhere yeah. he goes. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah. <laughs> right <laughs> could use it against them yeah that's a whole different life hitting the sellies yeah being a professional athlete they're getting paid now bro inflation bro or whatever's going on <laughs> everything's going up crazy on the contracts now it's like every contract that's going to be coming out for the next five years it's like it's going to be I guess not all the contracts but of the contracts that are being signed by professional athletes the top 1% of all those athletes those contracts are getting so fucking huge every year. It's yeah. crazy. Hundreds of millions. I remember thinking that when I was Ams. like 12 years old watching football. And I be I remember being like, oh, so-and-so is going to be the highest paid quarterback ever. Mm-hmm. Isn't that crazy? Yep. And then someone. some <laughs> Drew Brees. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, right. <laughs> but then either. I think it was my dad explained to me that like every quarterback. Or maybe it was my stepdad. I'm not sure. But every quarterback that signs a contract that's like uh, like an A-tier quarterback, like the best of the best. Mm-hmm. They're always going to reset the market every time. So if anybody's like in the top five of their position and they get a new contract, it'll always be the most that anybody's ever made there. And then you saw like Tua Tagalova was the highest paid quarterback of all time for a little bit there. Okay. Yeah, yeah. They're all getting that 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 little title. Yeah. Yeah. With, yeah. with every new contract that comes out. If you're that it should be your it's like C D Lamb. He's like he just got signed, you know, it's like the highest paid non quarterback contract ever. Right. And it's like, well, I think Justin Jefferson did the same thing. Like <laughs> when he did he signed his. Yeah. And the same shit's going on with, yeah, Jamar Chase is trying to get that same ballpark deal, you know? Yeah, that's why he's holding. Yeah. Could have held out, didn't hold out. Mm-hmm. Took the fucking L. <laughs> Should have been thinking about money. Should have been thinking about fucking X's and O's, I'll tell you Should've what. The... Should have been showing up to training camp, boy. <laughs> <laughs> Joe Burrow freaking dyed his hair blonde. First of all, it looks tight. He's pulling it off. He's whipping it? He's fired, dude. Let's go. He went like, like, a, reminds me of one of the bartenders <laughs> at yeah. the spot. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Much like that. <laughs> it's like, but it's like, it's, it's, that's a thing people are doing? People are doing that now? Going for it, dude. They're doing it. The, the, the bleach in your hair is coming back. If you, right now, it's the, like, in a month, it might be played out. Gone. But you could do it tonight, <laughs> and you'll be on the money. You'll be in. Yeah, I've seen the pusher cultures do it. I've seen it. Yeah, I've seen it happen. I've seen it, I guess, within... Two people in my own personal life, and then Joe Burrow for sure is another one. And he's a, he's a younger cat as well. He's in his early twenties, mid twenties, and he's a culture pusher for sure. Yeah, he he's definitely truly stylish. Some people just wear like a nice outfit, expensive clothes, exactly. Mm-hmm. But no, he's he's got it. You know what I'm saying? Got that touch. So <laughs> sorry, I was trying to I was thinking of a way to say pause, Joey but <laughs> I was gonna let it go. <laughs> but uh, <clears throat> I think that. His is like Eminem blonde is what I was trying to get around to saying. Okay. Like, I don't know if he could. That's not blonde. You know what I'm saying? That's like uh, yeah, bleached. Bleach blonde. Yeah. Yeah. Bleach blonde. It's not yellow. Yeah. It's fire. It's white. It's fire. If I were in a different place in my life, I might just go for it. Okay. I feel like he just pulled He pulled it. I'm like, all right, bet. Let's go. That's what we're doing. Like, it's fire. <laughs> what's happening here? <laughs> I'm game. If I was going through. Joey like, Burr. I don't know one of them. I don't know. Yeah. What's he going through? He's just like, all right. Dude, he's going through trying to find relevance again. Yeah, something different. I think that was part of it. Like, people forgot about them, you know? Yeah, I wish I did. <laughs> <laughs> I put some put some faith into them behind a behind a not a bet exactly, but kind of we bet on the whole season week by week. But oh man, the freaking Bengals! Part of it was I watched the Matrix Revolutions. Okay, the and, fourth Matrix, right? Yeah, and one of the things that I noticed in the Matrix is like when the people who are like awake and they're able to go to the real world when they zap back into the matrix and they're dressed in their own clothes they're always like i don't know and the original matrix they're wearing like all leather all black all black they've got their hair mm-hmm. in like braids and stuff slick back they're wearing black like, sunglasses so, sometimes like morpheus was wearing like big red sunglasses like they've mm-hmm. got this flare of swag on them too where they're like shit's kind of dyed purple here or like <laughs> they're dripping dog like for real yeah yeah, yeah. and it's kind of a cool representation of a fuck right Mm-hmm. When I try to place like what the style is there, it's like imagine like computer nerds on full drip. 
That's what it feels like they were going for there. You know what I'm saying? All right. But it's also like trying to symbolize choice, I guess. Mm -hmm, Like if mm -hmm. you had true choice within something that was normally completely confined to you, this is what you'd actually look like. Mm. And there was something like about that style that was like, I was trying to like, you know, peel back these layers. But when I saw Joe Burrow with the bleached hair, it was like reminiscent of that. Okay. So if I were him, I'd be like, we're fucking, I'm turning into the best of the best. We're, we're about to be on Super Bowl shape. I know Kung Fu now. Like, don't, <laughs> I ain't talking about this, that, or the other. Let's fucking play ball. I know Kung Fu. <laughs> Show me. That's what I hope happens. I mean, they got it handed to them, bro. Yeah, they lost. Yeah, they were big under or big favorites. I think the tied for the biggest spread of the week. I don't think anybody else had a larger spread than that. Seven and a half. Mm, it's a big. No, one. that was a big one. It's a big boy. Who was the other seven and a half? The Bills. Was it? Was it really seven and a half? Mm-hmm. Oh man, and Arizona Austin Carbon cards. Yeah. Why do we? Why do we? Come on. Why didn't we? That's that seemed like a money lock. Hindsight. Hindsight's a song, bitch. <laughs> what is it about hindsight that's like that? Because you get to see, or you get to see how the movie plays out, or you know, like it's like the the result of the actions. Yeah, you get to see the reaction. It's like, ah, shit. That's that's how it played out. I should have played it like this. I, I was like, hell yeah, I hit that bitch right. I didn't know. <laughs> you only you only know so much. But yeah, man, NFL's a song, bitch. Joey, all right. So you said you were talking about the Matrix, the the most recent one. Yeah. Or I guess you're, you're with the but the style the styling choices is, is like similar throughout the whole series. Is that what you're saying, or it was a little different? Well, in the movie, it's cl- it it likes to call back to scenes from the original movie. So I was able to like see some of the original Matrix and like. Mm. You know the scene where they're going into the bank for like the last final big fight? Him and Trinity? Yeah. And they go fucking bonkers? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that's freaking... Freeze! Uh, go, start doing the wall runs for the first time. I don't think you'd ever yeah. seen that before. Dude, yeah, one-handed cartwheels and shit. <laughs> one-handed cartwheels with a strap. Just tick, 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 tick. <laughs> Crazy. <laughs> Crazy. It's iconic. That's the word I was looking for. Walks through the fucking... <laughs> walks through the metal detector, <laughs> opens the jacket, just strapped to the gills, dog. <laughs> It's like, all right, open your jacket, keys, belt, <laughs> fucking. <laughs> just like, like, holy shit. <laughs> 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 fucking on, bro. It's fucking on at that point. <laughs> yeah, that's fire. You, you know that scene so well, bro. It's in my fucking memory bank. <laughs> right. Yo, they're wearing like a lot of, they're wearing like leather everything. Oh, yeah. She's got like leather boots on, a leather trench coat. They've got these like black sunglasses. Their hair's all fucking, I think mm-hmm. Trinity has like braids on the side of her head maybe. Like they're fucking just like, the drip is crazy. They're not, they don't, they're not running there like Rambo or like police with like armor on. They're just mm-hmm. like fucking dripping, dude. <laughs> I'm going out with a bang, cuz so fuck, bro. Take a pig, dog. Mm-hmm. It's crazy. I love so, it. Yeah, me too, me too. It just started to stand out to me cuz there was a big fight scene where these they were the free-minded people were tapped back in to try to go with Neo to go find Trinity who was still stuck in the Matrix in this version of the Matrix that they're in, this reboot that is literally a reboot, you know what I'm saying? Okay. And it's so self-aware like the whole time. It's like making fun of itself the whole time. Like he has to make a new Matrix video game, but he's famous for making the old Matrix video game, which is supposed to be the old ones. And then they basically tell him, like, we're going to make this new Matrix game, whether you want to do it or not. And that, like, is also what happened in real life with the movie. That's like, he wasn't going to do it. But then they told him, like, they were going to make the movie with or without him. Mm-hmm. So then he did it. And then they put that in, like, the movie. So it's, like, really weird how it's, That's like. That's funny. <laughs> like Keanu Reeves, you said? Or yeah. You mean? Right. Yeah, Keanu Reeves in real wasn't life gonna do it. wasn't going to do the Matrix reboot because he's like, that's dumb. You should not try to recreate this thing. Let's just make like new movies. Like, we made John Wick. Let's make new John Wick. Like, why are we going back? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then they were like... Fair. I'm with that. A lot of people say stop remaking movies and There's make so many remakes movies. in the last 10, 15 years. It's crazy. Ridiculous amounts of remakes. Sorry, reboots, whatever. No, I hate it. <laughs> we can talk about it. It's annoying, dude. It literally finds my keys. All these remakes. <laughs> yeah. And fucking remixes. Please. Okay? <laughs> can we get some original content in this motherfucker, bro? Right. People love it, though. It gets, I guess, um, okay, maybe it stems from where's like the, where's the, where's the intent coming from truly? You know what I'm saying? Are you trying to like pay homage or are you trying to just like ride the wave and reignite some nostalgia and get some plays off of that? Because like, why wouldn't, if you're trying to, like, why wouldn't you try to make new shit? You know what I'm saying? Why, why would, where does the energy come from to even want to make a remake? There we a go. remix. 
that's a great evaluation measure for whether or not we should think this is bullshit. And I like what you're saying about because it's if it's nice, if it's like I'm gonna make this song, everybody loves this song, but it sounds so old. You know what I'm saying? Okay. It's like the 10 year anniversary of the song. Mm-hmm. So if I just like do a slight subtle like a uh, new mix on the song and then maybe add like an extra verse at the end for everybody that's listening back. That's kind of cool. You're giving us some original content when you're re- doing a extra verse for us too. Mm-hmm. But like when Big Sean came out with the 10 year anniversary for Finally Famous, I don't think there was any extra content on there. Maybe like an extra song maybe or something. There was an extra song. Right? There was. I remember. Okay. I listened to the whole thing for that one song. I remember. For sure. Yeah. I remember there being something else. I think it was a remix and mastered as well. And I get it, like, keeping himself relevant, it's cool. Like, if he wasn't going to release music, but we get that instead, okay, that's cool. But, like, think about a movie. Like, if the your favorite director is, like, spending his time making a reboot of an old movie, and, like, you're going to go see this, like, new version of this old-ass movie that people liked a lot, like, that guy could have been spending his whole time and energy and effort, and all the money they paid, all of those people could have gone to, like, a new movie. Like, I want fucking dude do you remember the feeling when you watched goodwill hunting for the first time where the fuck is that feeling <laughs> i want that back why are we doing everything over and over it's not it's i need fucking fresh boom you know what i'm saying something new take me somewhere i've never been mm-hmm. <sighs> it's a lot to ask <laughs> dude matt damon and ben affleck did it in an apartment like two dudes <laughs> just spitballing <laughs> Do you think that was like... Yeah, well, what makes that movie so great? Or what's the what's the thing you're just referring to? <sighs> well, I like to use that movie as an example because I think like you don't have to... Everyone... That hit, that movie hits everyone for the most part so hard that you're just like, dude, that movie's fucking amazing. That movie's everything. <laughs> so, Shawshank like, Redemption. So I don't have to explain what I'm talking about, but it's a good question. Shawshank Redemption too, right? Yeah. Th- that's the other one that's kind of in my head. That is movie like, for sure. You watch that, you're like, damn, movies are crazy. That shit's great. Right? That shit was great. So maybe it's hard to ask people to go make those. Make great art. <laughs> Just create great art out of nothing. Why is it so hard to ask? You know what I'm saying? <laughs> no, but that, because isn't that what we're doing here? Is like kind of maybe what we're stemming from part of our like, why why do remixes? Because it's like, I think part of what we're doing here is creating new art, like, right? And then it's like to not be creating or to be creating art, but to be remixing it or re- remaking it. It's like, uh, maybe it's not completely in line with what I think we're doing here creatively or what I want to do here as a creative. Right. You know I'm saying if I do, if I am gonna make like a movie or a show or a song or something, and I do, I'm not gonna do like an exact remake or reboot of something. Yeah, because I'm just trying to like run out the the scenario where I become like a director or like I make movies. I'm just like, in my director's mind, I don't want to make redo another movie or, or like you know what I'm saying. If I'm a writer, or whatever. Right. If I write the scripts. Right. But if I'm writing the script, if I'm Shakespeare or writing a play or whatever, I'm doing the thing. I would, I would, the way that I would like incorporate the the remake or the remix or the incorporation of the old information into the new and to bring it new again is like, yeah, I would like try to find subtle ways to pay homage to it through like similar situations or through like a, like a nod of inspiration. You know what I'm saying? Through like a character's name or something they say, or I don't know. There's, I think it's a little different way to, I guess like in music is an easy example. You could like, you like use someone's bars like in a different flow or use someone's flow with like different bars and it's like paying homage kind of to it or like bringing it back to life like how Drake did on uh, Her Loss or that first song fucking uh, what's it called yeah yeah he took the 20 the, the flow from TI 24s yeah and yeah people do that all the time in hip hop for sure so like I guess that's not people might be why I think like that but if I was going to do it in a movie or a book or a show I would also try to incorporate the same ideology or the same thought of how to incorporate the past instead of just like trying to remake it yeah. for itself and like just redo it. Just being inspired. Yeah, I would just try to use some of the inspiration or like a, maybe like a pivotal thing that happens. I would have like a, a similar setup and a pivotal thing happening, but like maybe like the opposite would happen or I don't know, something, you know what I'm saying? Something like that. Yeah. But I ain't trying to remake a whole fucking movie. Because so where, where does it end? Where does it end? They're probably going to be doing remakes of our remakes in like 20, 30 years. It'll never end. Like Star Wars, the original Star Wars, one through seven. Right. All those are going to get remade in the next 30 years. Probably so. Right? I'd imagine. All the Lord of the Rings. I mean, it's not the same resources going to remake those movies as it is new movies. So maybe it's okay for people to dedicate money and budget to people who want to remake those movies. 
I mean, we do. I am happy that there's new like Lord of the Ring movies. I guess someday if they remade the Harry Potter movies, I'd be like, you know, it's nice to have it re. I'm gonna remake that with a new Daniel Radcliffe. <laughs> Oh, you're saying that? That's mm-hmm. nuts, dude. Dude, yeah, I don't know, right? Man. <laughs> <laughs> okay, why are we spending our resources doing that? That's the thing. Why? Well, let's just make a new Harry Potter. Leave it alone. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Yeah, like a conti- like a con- continuation. Is that what you're saying? No, nah, just like what Harry Potter was in its essence. Oh, yeah, I guess you were saying. Yeah, yeah. It's a, story a new story that rocked the world. A new book. Yeah, I need a new series. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, yeah. It's like the same thing with like Game of Thrones. It's like they. It's like made House of Dragons to like you know what I'm saying keep, keep, keep people in that world. It's like dude, it's like a reboot almost. Do you of that. hate that? Do you love that? I enjoy it. I we started watching it. We're like an episode and a half deep, and I've yeah I've asked multiple people their their opinion on it, and I guess the general the general answer is always like oh yeah it's good it's it's good. I don't think anyone's I don't think it could pass or surpass Game of Thrones in any capacity. Maybe it can later on if we give it a couple seasons, but the shit's. Game of Thrones is pretty tight. It's pretty yeah. airtight. <laughs> yeah. It's a great story. But yeah, I think that it's valuable. I enjoy it. I think it's cool. Vikings has the same thing where there's like two other whole shows. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's like that. Vikings. Valhalla or whatever. Yeah, there's Vikings Valhalla and there's another one too. Mm. Yeah, but exactly. And it's like the same show, but it's not the same show. It's different characters, different problems. Same setting, more or less. Same culture. Same world. References cross back and forth, you know? Yeah. And in that sense, I do, like, appreciate those shows to some degree. Because it's like, I do kind of want to still live in that world. I'm like, yeah. I'll, t- I'll take a fresh story in that world. Yeah, 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 yeah. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. We hate- love the nostalgia. We love that shit. Yeah, I hate on that. Yeah. And then we also, like, like with the, the Beetlejuice remake that just came out. Like, it's, or I think, I'm not sure if it's a remake or a, a sequel. It might be a sequel. But they just... Have it like re re revitalize that franchise or that movie, you know what I'm saying? And, and that cult following. And then I think now they're, it's like a double whammy because they're able to revitalize it and recultivate it for the people who have been following that particular, whatever it is, that niche of movie or that niche of type of show. And they're rebooting these things and they're able to like, the viewer who's con- uh, consuming it is able to reconsume it in a new way. So like, hits our nostalgia and it, it's like new enough, but familiar enough. So it's like a fucking. It's like a bee to honey or a bear to honey. <laughs> yeah. But then also they're able to like share it with their kids too because it's been like enough time has passed for a lot of these people to have kids. Right. And they can go watch these movies together and like do the whole thing again. Back yes. at it again. Yes. But where... It's money. Where are the people making it? Because the one thing is that we could define, we need to define what a reboot is or a remake, what we're talking about. We don't hate that. That's mm-hmm. nice. It's nice. <laughs> but at the same time where's the new art like the, the, the Ghostbusters remake okay it's like just make a new movie please don't you don't have to do that you're just okay. gonna borrow that idea you're just gonna redo it with new people and we'll go watch it cause it's like oh it's the updated version it's a different take I'm like just make a new movie that I haven't seen <laughs> you know what I'm saying Kevin Hart does it there's a lot more I guess I'm just thinking about it like monitor or Fiscally, yeah, it's like it's probably more money in the rebakes. Bang, sure, a lot, or maybe not a lot more money per per se. It's, it's all relative, depending on how much you spend and whatever the return is, or whatever, whatever. No, the draw on Ghostbusters, Any of that shit. just the name of it, probably exactly. brings a lot of revenue. Yeah, it has a it has a much lower floor. It's a it's a much more solid flex. Yeah, <laughs> to make a reboot than it is to fucking start somebody who could drop a dud on you. See, I'm not playing fantasy football with my art. <laughs> I'm making art. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. That, that's yeah. That's what we're talking about too. I think. It, yeah, but Ghostbusters came into the shit. meta and fucked up the meta because that movie was just like right. Idea was original. Yeah, it was good, well executed. This was what was going on, and this was going what was going on. So people were familiar with this, but not quite familiar with this. And in time and in place, it just hit perfectly for a nice little fireworks show of a fucking moment in culture. Mm-hmm. That's what we're looking for here. Just like feel what's around. You know what I'm saying? Tom Cruise is making Mission Impossible 7. You know what I'm saying? We just did Top Gun again. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like my dog. Give me. I, I'm not hating on it. But just like, <laughs> come on, can we do something not Ocean's 14 with these guys? You know? That was a Furious 10. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, um, there might be more. There might be more. And, uh, man. I say that, but at the same time, when I'm watching a great TV show and it ends, I'm fucking sad. I never want the show to end, 
make something new though, damn it. Like, mm. like it's hard to ask for both, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Son of a bitch. <laughs> <laughs> you can't have it all. These are the boxes can't. we live in. <laughs> I want the new original art. Netflix has been they put out a whole bunch of types of shows. You know, I think that they're they're trying to curate a creative, you know, fi- film, mil- media, like shows, movies. They're, they're trying to do a whole bunch of shit. They're all over the place. Yeah, they got a lot of stuff coming out. Yeah. They're seeing what sticks. Yeah. 3% came yeah, from let's that. Go. Yeah, 3% was tight. They had Altered Carbon. That shit was tight. Gas. Yeah. <laughs> that show's gas. Absolute gas. Highly recommend. That show's great. It is super... Um, like hypersexualized in the first season. It's super gory. Like everything is like on a times ten filter. Like all the normal like nudity, uh, drug usage, gore, sexual scenes, all of that. Violence. It's just on ten. Like they they just wanted to like make a statement with being like I feel like super aggressive with everything at first. Mm. So when I recommend it, I'm not saying like isn't that tight? You, know? <laughs> <laughs> you like that? <laughs> uh, they tone it down in the second season, which I appreciate just to some degree. Because sometimes you're like, oh geez, I'm just... yeah, with Game of Thrones, I'm just like, all right, I get it. <laughs> I get it. They're in a whorehouse. I understand that. Okay. No, sure? Could we move on <laughs> from the to... fact that they're in a whorehouse? <laughs> I understand 100%. I get it. Come on. Hit me with the facts. Hit me with the dialogue. Hit me with the storyline. Exactly. Exactly. Where does so, that come from? They're like, oh, we just need to keep the viewers. We need to keep them in, in, entertained. Keep them engaged. It's, I don't know. It's it a little Let's weird sometimes. It. Let's talk about it. Why not? <laughs> it's a little weird. Why? Okay, there are those shows that do that. With that recommendation. Sure. Yeah, yeah. You know that. Giving that recommendation, too. Yeah. Oh, I, I have it's a, a little. It's a little <laughs> <laughs> I've got a forewarning for you. Don't watch it with a child. Don't watch it with the kids. <laughs> Make sure they're in a bed, like, asleep, bed asleep. And call me tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> Put them to bed. It's not cool. In part, why, why did I, when I was watching Altered Carbon and evaluating why this is the thing that's going on as a motif, one, are they just trying to desensitize this? That's one question. Just mm. want to desensitize us to that stuff? That's a conspiracy mind. Okay. Okay. If I'm looking for, you know, a defensive version of a reason why. But maybe they want to capture attention. Maybe it's just like statistics, like sex scenes longer than this time frame. And at these many intervals per episode captures 30% more viewers per Retention. episode. Yeah, exactly. It could be as simple as it's that. It's like a, I, I said the analogy coming to mind, a cross reference of like, it's like kind of like a, the restaurant analogy you were talking about, or the restaurant statistics, insofar as it's like first time goers of the restaurant, like if, if, if you make them a second time comer of the restaurant, then they are much likely to, are much more likely to stay and come consistently. Yeah. It's like if they watch the first episode, they might fall off. But if they watch the first two episodes, the likelihood that they're going to watch all of it is increased by 45% or some shit. I don't know. So maybe they're just trying to get that some, some something along those lines for yeah. retention. Yeah. But then who are they retaining? <laughs> Who's like, okay, I'm gonna watch this show. This show's got boobies. <laughs> <laughs> Who's not a fucking child? Right. Right. Most people that are appreciating the art are in a group of people that say that you could tone it down a little bit. Right. Yeah. There's that for sure. There's that for sure. The true viewership of the actual story. <laughs> I don't know. So why? I also yeah, wonder why there's to be, be sensitized. Uh, yeah, I also wonder why there's sex scenes in movies. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Like sometimes, I mean, just like okay, we'll just pause. Like, does it ever make sense to have a sex scene in a movie? Like, you don't mm. have to, you don't have to do that. Most of the, most of the, most of the time, it's not super relevant to the story. Yeah, if it happens, it happens. Or it's like in a book. You know what I'm saying? Or it's like you can like write it out. Or it's like the implication or. Whatever, because I've seen it done tastefully, you know what I'm saying, here and there, where it's just like, it, the implication is there. Yeah. It's like the, like the lead up, and then like the implication, and then it's like next scene. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was like, okay. Like, that's... I get the idea. That's how I would do it. I see what <laughs> happened in the story. I get it. They're at a whorehouse. Like, <laughs> I understand. You can uh, get it out of my face now. Right, yeah. yeah. You, you put that away. Yeah. For sure. <laughs> I don't know. Are there people that are just like... <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> This is art. <laughs> this is art. <laughs> <laughs> fucking weird people, bro. This is like their favorite part of the whole fucking production. You fucking know what I'm weirdos. Like, I don't know. The movie was great. It could have used a little more sex scenes. <laughs> <laughs> From my personal, my personal opinion, storyline's great. Acting was great. Supporting acting was even better. 
setting was great. Not enough, not enough peen or bean. <laughs> no peen or bean or beans. All right. I didn't see none of that. Give me a little more and I'll come back next time. Like, what the fuck? Who's thinking those things? Here's one one thing is to think about, because you could write every book. Like you don't you could just not include that in your book. Like you could tell the story of the movie and just not you could take out anything in the story almost and like tell the story as long as long as it's not like a critical fucking plot. Changing, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know what I'm saying? So like I, sometimes I remember watching a sex scene in a, in a show recently and being like, or I think it was in a movie. I think I was watching like a fucking, there's definitely one movie I was watching called fucking, they take Arnold Schwarzenegger <laughs> crypto cop. I don't know. <laughs> it's called fucking. <laughs> There's going to be some sex scenes in that movie. <laughs> <laughs> Arnold Schwarzenegger old movie <laughs> sorry yeah it's called like cryo cop or something they pull Arnold Schwarzenegger out of a cryo like chamber total recall or whatever yeah maybe that's it I don't know Sandra Bullock Arnold Schwarzenegger they uh there's like a scene in the movie where like they're they go back to her house and they have some like sexual tension for sure and then she's more or less kind of just like do you want to have sex and he's like uh, okay, babe. Like, totally. <laughs> he kind of talks like, oh, shoot, babe. All right. I don't know. I can't do Arnold Schwarzenegger. <laughs> it's somewhere in that range. And, uh, I'm here for it. She's like, okay, well, put on this helmet. And he's like, you know, there's some there's some awkward tension where he Into some cosplay. He doesn't quite know that maybe sex is different for her in this future that he's come to because he's from like 100 years in the past. Times. Got it. And so he's all taken off his shirt. He's like smelling his breath. He's like, oh, sure, here we go. Just push ups, whatever. <laughs> and then he puts on this helmet. <laughs> Get a pump. <laughs> I need a pump. It's a. Uh, it's it's not Arnold Schwarzenegger. It's Sylvester Stallone. That's okay, why I'm okay, fucking okay, it up okay, for you. Okay, okay, there we go. There we <laughs> I go. I felt there was a disconnect. It's funny because it's just like his acting is hilarious too. That's part of what I've been making fun of. Is uh, he doesn't just like he's not like fucking Matt Damon. Just like, hey, how you doing? I'm Jeff. He's like, I don't know about the fucking Rocky Balboa. <laughs> <laughs> it's in there, bro. He's in there. He's still. He's always Rocky and Rambo. Okay, in every role he plays. But in this movie, he's a cop, or he's like a he's a yeah. cop. Yeah, he's a cop, and he's a badass human. He's not like a like a robot. Nah, just normal. Got it. Cryo cop. He came out of the ice. Got it. Heard. And uh, he uh, has a lot of problems with current culture because they've gone super PC, and they have like a. He's like, what the fuck is this? And it's like. <laughs> You've been fined one dollar for breaking the verbal abuse policy set by our standards in our community. He's like, the fuck, <laughs> He's like you motherfucking cocksucking. It just starts spitting all these tickets at him. It's, just, it, it's a weird take on culture for sure. Her, okay, cool, wow. So they put on these oh, helmets. Wait. She's like, let's hook up, and then they fucking put on their helmets, and then they start like having like sensory sex with no physical sex. But it's also not so straightforward that he's just like feeling it. It's like a weird mental thing going on. He's kind of like not sure. And then she's just like having sex. And then he's all like, yo, what the fuck is this? This is crazy talk. <laughs> and then she's like, oh, yeah, well, what do you mean? And he's like, we have sex like, you know. You know what I'm saying? Animals. <laughs> like animals. <laughs> <laughs> like dogs. <laughs> like dogs. <laughs> And then she's like, oh, no, that's crazy. That's primitive. That's that's ancient history. What are you talking about? You guys, you want to exchange bodily fluids with me? Like, that's been outlawed for like 50 years. We don't exchange bodily that's fluids. It's outlawed. Yeah. So they're like not even, and it reduced disease rate by like 90% or something like that, by no, not exchange of bodily fluids for this cultural change. Mm -hmm. So in that movie, when I was like, why is this even in this movie? And I'm like, I guess it kind of expresses like how culture would change. And if we don't want culture to change to where they're all of these controls on us that were so pacified were like, okay, let's have sex. We should like do something about it or whatever. Maybe that's a statement they're trying to make. Yeah. But I've also seen other movies where they're just fucking and it's just like, why was that even in the movie? Why the <laughs> fuck? It was so random. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. They want to show her boobs for a second. It's like, it's rated R so they get to. I, I don't know why they're doing it. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Right? It's like, you speak PG-13. Yeah, right? Without the sex scene. It's like, no, we need to be rated R for what we're going for come here. Come on now, for our demographics. We're going to make it rated R, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, come on. It's <laughs> <laughs> fucked up. If it's a good fucking movie, it's a good fucking movie. We don't need the extra bullshit. If it's a great story, like, right. how many, I guess in fucking Shawshank Redemption or in fucking Good Will Hunting, how many sex scenes are there in either of those movies? 
I couldn't tell you. I'm sure Ch- ChatGPT could. I'm thinking Good Will Hunting. I don't think it has hardly any sex scenes. Maybe with his girlfriend, but it's definitely like it's okay. So here's what here's where I'm trying to push the envelope, but like for why? What what are they? What envelope are they pushing, and what's the reason for pushing it? Right. Because I do think that there is room in good art for like he like falls in love with that girl. You know what I'm saying? In Good Will Hunting. Yeah. Yeah. Like love is a powerful trope it's a it's a powerful thing that we build a lot of stories around bruh like almost all of them so like, i get it i fucking get it but like come on <laughs> what are we talking about right right maybe sometimes hbo is trying to make a fucking statement like look at just how fucking not commercialized we are not controlled we are but like your other media is so you're mm-hmm. like dude this shit on hbo is fucking crazy they never show that shit on fox yeah and maybe they like having that as a brand to some part of the branding yeah yeah Yeah. i can see yeah i guess what's the energy behind it is my question right Right. who's the who's the the who's running hbo who's like thinking that or like wanting to push that narrative more forward it's like all right you push a little bit more a little bit more versus yeah tv shows 30 years ago versus tv shows now like bruh bruh i haven't seen i haven't even seen i guess like the Example that just came to mind. I haven't even seen this show, but uh, Euphoria. Have you seen that show? Um, I've heard about it. I know about it. It's a, Drake, it's a show it. that Drake co-produced or whatever the fuck. Oh my god, let's get into it. Right. <laughs> I haven't seen it. I know that uh, my fiance's sister has definitely seen some of it. She's talked about it a little bit to me, but yeah, apparently it's just like super sexualized, with like height, or I guess super dramatized and sexualized, and almost like grossly so. With like high school was like the setting, right? That's what I heard about it when it was out. Yeah, yeah. So I haven't seen like anything about it, or I haven't watched a single episode of it. But from what I've heard, I'm just like, oh, what the hell's going on here, y'all? Who's making these decisions yeah. and why? Yeah. Okay. Okay. Can I see a world where that's a good art? Like, man, I, you. There's an argument for it. Like, if these adults are supposed to realize, like, you know. Well, did you have sex when you were in high school? Like, yeah. So I feel like a lot of people can connect to, like, I guess if you were going to sexualize, like, make it. But why, it's like, why are you making a show about those parts of people's lives? You know what I'm saying? But there is room on the back end for these adults to connect to that feeling, but then also open their eyes to, like, that high school is like this crazy cosm of, like, its own hierarchy and its own fucking jungle, you know? And maybe you're just kind of like sending your kids to that jungle all the time and you're not thinking about it. So maybe there is an argument to be made that it that the on premise alone, it could be good art. Right? That's what you're saying. Right. I, I'm I like will- the words that are coming out of your mouth. <laughs> I'm willing to that catch that. <laughs> like, <laughs> that makes sense. Okay, I can see a world where it's tastefully done, you know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. All of the people having these sex are like consenting people, unless it's like the episode is about the drama that comes about from something not consensual. Mm-hmm. But if they're just being kind of like the the arguments that I've heard against the show is that it's just like more so maybe Drake made a show that was kind of loosely like just having these sexual drugged up fucked up scenes where it's like, okay, this is what we're going to make art today about act. Like this is what you're going to say. And just like not, not making creative art that has an expression. It's trying to make these motifs it's trying to hit and these ideas it's trying to share with people. Like there's a difference between, Mm -hmm, you know what I'm saying? mm -hmm, mm -hmm. What could be, what what we're talking about here. Yeah. Right. Yeah, bro. Desensitizing us. Yeah. Maybe they want kids to watch it, desensitize them to it. Like, that's a different energy going into the piece. I see that being like step five of a hundred step plan for the pedos. You know what I'm saying? I don't. Yes, I know what you're saying. Hypothetical land. We're talking hypothetical land here, ladies and gentlemen. I don't disagree with you at all. Hypothetical land. But in this hypothetical land, I see that this could be a. What, the, what envelope are they pushing? Who's pushing it and why? And the desensitization, the over-sexualization. It's like, hmm, why? I don't know. Maybe it's because the pedos want to make being a pedo not a pedo. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, I've definitely heard about like the so, proposed verbiage. Yeah, the minor attracted person. Come on, dude. Maps. Shut the fuck up, shut dude. The fu- I, I th- we talked about this before, but f- shut the fuck up again. Shut the fuck Still, up, bro. Still, again. Catch a fucking backhand, Shut dog. the fuck up till I die with that shit. Come For on. Real. What are we talking about? Yeah, no. But yeah, maybe no whoever's kidding. behind that agenda trying to make, you know, trying to reorchestrate our fucking 
wiring of what's like the way we are able to describe and define what is legal and illegal, just like through human fucking words and shit. Yeah. It's like maybe they're trying to use their human words and their human influence to slowly get to the points where we can do that. You know, it's like, yeah. just like slowly increasing the temperature slowly, but surely. And then before you know it, you're fucking boiling alive. Mm. I Hypothetical land. Dude, I, it, that, that idea that like forces bigger than us are trying to desensitize us as a people to get away with nefarious things in our culture that our more Western and Christian based culture would n- typically not be cool with. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. The idea of that has been present on my head top since I was like 20, about 20 years old, just from some fucking conspiracy theory rabbit holes, bro. <laughs> I like uh, working at holes, working baby. at the library at college, just like in front of a computer okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. for like eight hours, just end up some places, bro. <laughs> just like no you gotta be careful way, really. on the internet for eight hours in a bro. row. You gotta watch out. <laughs> <laughs> you end up in a weird spot. It's like driving for eight hours. <laughs> just driving for eight hours. You're just like, oh my god, where am I? What the fuck is any of this shit? How did I even get here? Back, 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 back. <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah. Close out all the tabs. You have like 45 tabs. <laughs> <laughs> Holy You're shit. You're kind of shook. It's dark outside now. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. That, but so that, that, can pre- do that, that with was our brains. one of our catalyst points for, I guess, the idea that, what was the idea initially they, they said took over you? <sighs> that there, it became present that this was, it didn't like take over me, but it became like something yeah, that presented itself. presented itself and I've been like consciously aware of and kind of monitoring since I've heard about it. Got it. Was that there's no... You know, people in power, potentially even like, you know, bigger than our government or entangled in our government that aim to desensitize us, specifically here in America, to stuff like violence, gore, sex, um, you know, potentially even, like you said, like pedophilia to whatever degree, Mm -hmm. to like normalize it to some degree to us for whatever nefarious reasons they might want to do, ultimately to try to like uproot the more Western idea of a Christian based culture that yeah. America was founded on. The family foundation. Yes, family foundation. Yeah, when we talk about just how you talked about before that you feel like there's forces that are nefarious that are trying to break down the family model as how we typically live our lives. Mm-hmm. Whereas some people would say that that's like like a culture trend. That's just the way things are going. But, you know, yeah, there, there's yeah, yeah. A, a conspiracy out there that that's more being wedged into our lives than it is like a true just like expansion What's being of, wedged in like um, that culture or like Hollywood or rich people, whatever you want to call it, that they're that they're kind of pressing this on us that mm. families aren't like breaking up so much. They wouldn't on their own accord. Like some people argue that what's happening with people's divorce rates and everything else, that it's just like the the nature of human progression. Like maybe we were we're not all meant to be in family bundles, and some of us are more meant to be like on our own and independent, and not needing other people and not needing children. Mm. Whereas originally it was kind of weird if you were doing that. Yeah, right. Right. Like back in if you're watching Mad Men, right. Like whenever the the chicks like divorce, it's like a super taboo, crazy thing. Right. You know what right. I'm and the show's set back in the '60s. Right. It's not even that long ago. Yeah. But now it's like. Almost, if if you're an independent woman, you know, making a ton of money, maybe five years ago, not not that it's not cool now, but it was like super extra cool five years ago. It's like, oh yeah, that's what we want to be. That's what we aim to be. Someone who doesn't need anybody, someone who can do it all on their own. And that being idealized in our culture, there might be some help. That's getting some help from some rich nefarious forces and a big meta plan that's in place to push mm-hmm. this on us. So mm-hmm. that way we don't, you know... I don't know why they want to do that to us. Yeah, well, I would try to destabilize. Right. But that's a conspiracy theory that's out there. That's the Illuminati. That's what the fuck they're doing. Mm-hmm. That, that's that conspiracy theory for sure. Yeah. Yeah. I've also ran across a similar similar rabbit hole right. <laughs> of thought. Right. But monitoring it, it's like, uh, it's hard to say if that's what's actually going on. You know? Hmm? Like, like euphoria being step five of a hundred step plan. Mm-hmm. It's hard to say for sure that there's a hundred step plan going on against us. I can't quite tell, you know, but, but maybe who knows, who knows, who really knows if you do, let me know. <laughs> <laughs> <All about it. laughs>
<laughs> my, we'll talk about it. My most intelligent self, if I was making my most intelligent guess, gun to my head. I'm taking a test. It's an SAT type test. I've got to make a multiple choice answer here. You got to hit him with a bang. I'm going with my gut. And what I think I what I what think is probably going on is that nef- that nefarious, nefarious force, I think, is initially a partnership between Russia and China that started 50, 60 years ago. After World War II or something. Yep. And I think that they secretly got together, initially just them, and they decided what they wanted to do was to uproot our American culture and divide us as much as they can and then come after capitalism as a whole as an ideal and then uproot us and try to get us back into communism, at which point it would be much easier for them to then annex us, take over, whatever it is. But just the idea of capitalism and that set as the ideal and the fact that it contested Russia and China as the number one superpowers in the world and that at one point in time we were richer than them, I think they were like, fuck that. Let's at least get them under control. And let's get them on communism. And Mm -hmm. I think because that's what the body of World War II was over, it was potentially reason for America to invade and take over other countries against Russia and China just based on the purposes or the presupposition of capitalism versus communism and communism being inherently evil. So if that's what's on the table, our government is inherently evil. And no matter what, you can come and save somebody whenever you want because you think we're fucking awful people or whatever. Like, fuck that. We're going to, like, fuck all of that culture. Mm. We're going to destroy that culture, literally. And Mm. so I think if there was a force out there that was doing that, I think it probably started with Russia and China enlisting a bunch of really rich people in America and then tempting them with tons of money to sell their soul. You know what I'm saying? To do evil shit, you know what I'm saying? To make mm-hmm. these movies, to get a Harvey Weinstein and get him in power and then just fucking enrich that guy and let him fucking do whatever he does. God knows what else is going on, you know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. At some point, the CIA doesn't fucking want us to know that Russia and China have bonded to take over our culture and you've been watching their movies for the last 50 years. Nobody fucking wants to know about that. <laughs> nobody fucking wants to hear that shit. You know what? <laughs> no, thank you. Just like nobody wants to hear that the... You know, the war in Iraq was ill put together. Mm, ill intentioned. Ill intended. Mm. That tons of people died because of some bullshit. Nobody wants to hear that. You know what I'm saying? So I think that they live in the shadow. That's the shadow they live in. You know what I'm saying? Just the idea of a shadow in general. It's like. Yeah, the outlaws. Yeah, that's the guys that they're able to hide. Like, how do they even exist? How could they exist in a. We don't know about them. How could that even happen? You know what I'm saying? It's like there's some blind spot in our culture for it, I think. I think that's why we don't know about it. Yeah. Or also, I think it's just, it's just hard to keep track of every single individual. There's 7 billion. There's so many people out there. There's so many fucking people just trying to be people. And that's like the assumption that we're trying to make is, or maybe like part of the presupposition that we carry in our culture. is like most of these people are just trying to be people and live their life. Right. But there are the ones out there. There are ones out there that live in the shadows or live in that. Like the the land of the of the lawless, like where the the, mm. the fucking cartels and people who don't play by the rules, like or don't like or think about and talk about things that normal people would never think about or talk about. It's like they live there, like that, that's their home. It's beyond. Crazy. It's it's outside of where the light touches in the, in the Lion King. Yeah, like, you've seen that in movies. Like mm-hmm. there's just someone who's so outlawed, like they're so away, like a drug dealer in a movie, maybe just so far away from the fucking normal life that everybody lives. But it's their home there, you know what I'm saying? It's like the yeah, like natural Ozark. habitat. Yeah. Yeah. He goes crazy in that shit. Yeah. Breaking Bad, all the all those. Yeah, dude. So they're out there. It's, just, it's hard to keep track of everybody. Hmm. Because also we're trying to get people motherfucking... Also, we, like, we're trying to put things in place to prevent that from happening. <laughs> from us being able to keep track of everybody. Yeah. It's like, ooh. Ooh, government's getting a little weird right there. It's like, or like the, the freedoms that we're granting people or I think there are... Seem to be God given. Uh-huh. It's like freedom of speech or like some privacy, you know. Right. But if there's this nefarious group and our government's here to protect us, they're just completely unaware. They just don't fucking know. Maybe they know they're in it. They're in on it. Now we're talking. No, we're now we're talking about a shadow. Because <laughs> it's like allegedly in the system that the school system raises you to just believe more or less is that like our government would stop that. Our fucking military, our patriots, our flag bearing people, they're not going to let some some nefarious force drive something into our culture to regular regularize pedophilia you know what i'm saying for instance or drug dealing or human trafficking or you know whatever the fuck else is going on that we don't know about you know Mm. 
Like, they should fucking be stopping that. There should be fucking presidents on the fucking news saying, we just found out about Pizzagate and we're fucking doing something about that. Okay? Yeah, like, right? What the fuck? Where's you know that what I'm at? Yeah. Because they're in on it. It says something. I don't know if it says that, but it says something. You know what I'm saying? It says something. It's saying something. I'm trying to hear it. I'm trying to listen. They're in on it. <laughs> they're doing it too. <laughs> oh my God. It's a trap. Who knows? Who knows where it stops? Lord knows some of those names. Yeah, because I watched. I'm sh- uh, I'm not sure if it's still out there. Maybe there's a variation of it still out there. I think it's called Falco Ball, something like that on YouTube. It's like a YouTube series, like maybe like ten episodes, from what I remember. Watched it like two or three years ago. But that shit was talking about some shit. Okay, okay. Pizza Gate for show. Sure. Really big time. A lot of a couple other examples of just like some weird, weird looking shit. It's like oh, we're being kind of manipulated over here, huh? But yeah, that, that Pizza Gate thing was crazy, bro. Remember See, Alex Jones know. talking about that? See here, dude, Alex. Back in the what's day. the first thing you think about when you think about Alex Jones? He's right. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I think. I think the first thought for general people is he's crazy. I think Joe Rogan helped change that narrative a little bit. Like that crazy motherfucker's right about a lot of shit. That crazy motherfucker's right. Like he, he's he's on ten, but he's all he's he's fucking right sometimes. More often than not, actually, surprisingly. He said that one time. Wild outlandish shit. Things that you would never believe. But sometimes they come out to be true. I have a little validity to them. Crazy guy. Right. But he was talking about this. Big time. Pizza Gate. Yeah. Yeah. Fucking Pizza Gate was crazy, bro. I guess like some of the names associated with Pizza Gate, it's like it goes up to fucking everybody. Everybody in that bitch. Yeah. When you talk about who went to Weinstein Island, you look at that list of people. Uh huh. Fucking Clintons are all over it. Right. Fucking. A bunch of celebrities. Who's the Microsoft guy? Bill Gates. Bill Gates is on there. It's like, what the fuck? What the fuck? You never know, bro. I don't know. See, I think there's another movie I think my fiance says she, she has watched that put her on, or opened her eyes to this idea as well back in the day. I think it was called Out of Shadows. Out of the Shadows or Out of Shadows? One of the two. Something like that. But I guess it's just talking about this crazy interwebbing, interwoven, like, Nefarious force that might be trying to fuck us up. It might be intertwined with some other forces that want to have us have a destabilized society. The land of the lawless, a little more easy to control, to pacify, distract. I agree. Because what's the one fucking thing that people die for, like in the movies and like in real life, or like that are willing to die for? Most people are willing to die for like their son or like their daughter. You know what I'm saying? Or like a family, like your mom or your dad. Mm. Like, what are you saying? That's like our strongest social connection. That's like our strongest point. Mm-hmm. It's like the family. So it's like if you don't have anyone to fight for or like anything to fight for, then you're not going to fight. Right. You're going to do whatever the fucking government tells you to do or right. whoever is supplying your existence, keeping you going. Right. Right. Because it's like, yeah, if they're trying to do this shit, it's like, nah, man, me and my family, we're going we're gonna to hold out, bro. We're going to fucking go down to, or already in Texas, but go down to my fucking stepdad's. I guess not a ranch, but he bought some land, get some guns, and you got to come and take it. <laughs> get the fuck that, out of here. I was going to get there with you, Texas, right? Mm-hmm. Boy. Come and take it, bitch. <laughs> yeah. And that's it's crazy because like that's why I, the biggest thing I get really active about politically is if they come after the Second Amendment. There's You can't, bro. You can't. Because it's the only thing that's like, okay, maybe you're in the government. Maybe you got the culture. Maybe you do. But you're not in my culture. You're not in my house. Yeah, you are one small blot of what's going on in my life. And mm-hmm. you guys can never control that. You can never, yeah, you can never take over my, my, my fucking You'd have to like enslave me. Hub. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, you have to kill me, bro. Yeah. It happens to people that get enslaved for sure. If you went to a Nazi prison camp, dude, that they, they made it your fucking, nope, you're in what is the Holocaust, you know? Mm-hmm. But- to keep that, to keep everything, the ability to minimize it to a nothing because it's not in your real world right in front of you, dude, you have to be able to bear arms. Like, have to. You got to be, they ain't, they ain't taking me and they ain't taking my guns. <laughs> like, you're just not. Or my family. Or my family. We're going to shoot it out. You're not taking my family. Like, you're not going to do that. It's, yeah, maybe this, that's part of the, one of the strongest forces, bro. It's like one of the, like, where true love comes from. You know what I'm saying? Mm. It's like God, I think I've had this thought. We're also hardwired to feel that, right? Or what do you mean? It's like in our DNA and stuff, you know? Because mm-hmm. like we're reproductive creatures, so you're supposed to like. I heard this thing that was like, uh, the only, 
the receptor, the thing that creates love or feels love, its job is to connect the parent to the kid. And then when you feel love, even for a partner, it's still the same receptor that was bonded and placed with the purpose of for the the parental to child love to like keep them together, to like make sure that the parents take care of the child and to make sure that the child doesn't act like a sociopath to the parents. Like they love each other, you know what I'm saying? And there's a receptor designed to do that. But then the same when you're in love with your wife and then it's like they're examining the same receptor. It's like it's not a different fucking place in your brain that's doing that. So then there's to say like there's uh, the same pathway. Yeah. Like it's like one one like the family. Like it's literally we have I don't know if that's just to keep us going as a species or because it's priority number one in our hearts. You know what I'm saying? Right. Right. Maybe. I said I think it might be that one. <laughs> <laughs> the latter. That's the argument. The heart one. <laughs> that's what I think it is. Because you feel something. We're living in love. Yeah, you live in feeling for sure. You feel your life. You feel your experience. Right. And like love is a big one. Right. Pain for sure. But love love and pain are like right there. They're right there. They're like top of the list. Right. And like true love. Or yeah, being able to like love someone. I think yeah, I think I remember having this connect the dot moment with the idea of like loving someone or loving something and then you like uh, the the phrase like God or uh, children are God's gift. It's like the ability to have a child and be like I love that thing. You know what I'm saying? I would die for that thing. I would kill for that thing. Right. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. I think that's maybe what they're trying to destabilize. Maybe you can't. Come and try. Motherfucker. Yeah, come, come and, and take it, bro. Yeah. <laughs> for real. I'm also just, I'm me. Bitch, who are you? You're not me. No, you're not. And that's just how I feel a lot of times where it's just like, no matter how you want to make me feel, no matter how you, anybody wants to make me feel about anything, like, I'm me. Like, I... Um, and I'm true to myself too. Like I'll, I know how to feel something and I know how to listen to that thing. And even if I know there's other stuff going on, I got to cope with and deal with like that feeling of like how, I, how I feel about something. Like you just can't take that from me. You know what I'm saying? Mm. So no, that's what, like you could try to persuade me all you want. You know what I'm saying? For sure. But like to be persuaded, like you'd have to like, it had to be true. Like I'm not, also I want to be open yeah. to persuasion too. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. But to, Take away how I truly feel about something, you know what I'm saying? Like you can never really do that. Yeah, because yeah, I'm trying to live more so in the truth, or it's like you can't like manipulate. You can only try so hard to manipulate the truth, right? And it's like I'm willing to let go of any of the things that I've been, you know, saying. Well, like, oh, maybe none of that's true, right? Maybe none of that shit's true. I could back it all up into like nothing, you know what I'm saying? Make it irrelevant. It's like, oh yeah, it doesn't even exist. That's that's how untrue it is, right? You know something you heard, mm-hmm. something like this. You're yeah, not gonna be like, oh man, but remember when they were saying that one thing? It's like you're already, you're out of that. You know what I'm saying? There's yeah. no influence on you anymore. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You can't you can't do it. You can't you can't take my. I think I'm, we mentioned this before, but you can't take the or like you assign your own meaning to your life. You know what I'm saying? So you can't really. You can try to influence someone and how they create their own meaning and what they think things mean, and have them create a life based on that lie and manipulation. Mm-hmm. But ultimately, if someone's aware and conscious and awake, then like you really can't. Right. You really fucking can't. There's nothing you can do. Right. There's nothing you can do. Sorry. <laughs> you can't touch them. No. It's like, no, fuck that. It's like the idea of maybe doing what your parents want you to do with your life. You just know it's not what you want to do with your life, no matter how bad you wish that they were right or that it was a smart choice or that you had the passion for it. You're just like, you know. You're like, I don't like doing this shit. I don't, I don't no. like growing tomatoes. I don't I fucking like fucking it. Fucking don't. I fucking hate carpentry. <laughs> I fucking hate it. <laughs> yeah, you know? I got more splinters than I can count. I fucking hate it. <laughs> yeah. There's so much stuff I like, and, and it, this doesn't feel like that. Right? You know? mm-hmm. Yeah. That feeling is... It's. I'm so happy that we have that. You know what I'm saying? We're not a hive mind. We're not truly manipulatable in that sense, I don't think. Yeah, we definitely be influenced heavily by others, but sometimes, yeah, it, it just takes one person to be like, no, that's not true. Mm-hmm. I guess maybe to identify something is not true or off, and then just like be able to stand on it. You know what I'm saying? Right. That's that's the hard part. Is be like, gotta stand on this shit. You gotta actually be about that shit. It's like I ain't about that shit. I'm so not about that shit that I had to say something about that. Yeah, it's like, good. It takes a lot to get there. It's fucking courage. It's like real courage. You know what I'm saying? Yes. The social discrimination or social ramifications for going against the herd or speaking up when shit's fucked or trying to set it set it right. 
Some yeah. justice. Maybe not even justice, but it's like, yeah, truth. Whatever it is. This is wrong. This is, this is off. It's like, y'all gonna take a vote on this shit? I'm not gonna go with the vote. I'll be the opposing. Yeah. You know, if it's gotta even be unanimous, it's like, oh shit. Yeah. Fuck y'all. <laughs> You're wrong. But yeah, I guess what gives people the ability to determine what's right and wrong? Whew. Getting fucking morals, talking about inherent good and evil. It's like, yeah. Uh, I was thinking about this movie with Matt Damon where he wants to go and frack oil in this small town and it's coming down to these people voting on it and he's like trying to fucking get them to okay it so he can like do his job but then he like falls in love with this lady in a town and then he kind of like maybe knows in his heart that the fucking studies aren't quite right and it might kind of fucked it's kind of fucked and then <laughs> you know what I'm saying so then it's like he has to kind of decide whether or not he's gonna like continue to just like persuade and, and say that this is the right thing to do and be charismatic or if he wants to like fuck it up or how he's gonna how he handles this this fucking situation you know mm -hmm. and it's when i was thinking about that movie i was like what ultimately what i think what drives him to like doing the right thing is the feeling of like love and compassion that he develops for like the people in the town yeah right mm -hmm. so there's some connection between like that love and like doing the right thing which might be why it's so important to not lose the sense of that love that we have you know what i'm saying these connections that keep us aligned with what what what's the right thing to do you know what i'm saying yeah right 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 that's fucking deep <laughs> cuz if you like yeah if you really like love someone or love something even if it's just like in a general sense like you love like people then you're much more much less likely to like do something or act in a way or okay a decision that would result in like a negative ramification for people on a general sense or like in a mass scale right right if you had that love like really it's like no i love these people i'm not gonna put my fucking people at risk or whatever feel like you're a kingdom you know lord lord of a fucking kingdom like, these are my subjects bro I love these people hopefully you do hopefully you do hopefully you do some people there's definitely you see the the tyrant all the time what do you think about fucking... All the time. North Korea's leader. Do you think he loves the people? Mm. Or South Korea? North Korea? One North of the Koreas. North Korea? Kim Jong-un? Kim Jong-un. Maybe he does. Maybe. Do you think he loves the people? Is, yeah. that, is that a question? Yeah. Mm. Maybe. Maybe. Not right. saying no. Of course. Probably. Probably. We'll say yes. We'll say yes. I love you guys. <laughs> But I think he loves ruling the people more than he loves the people. Mm. Mm. You know, I guess from like a dictator standpoint, that yeah. would kind of make what a dictator is. Yeah. Someone who loves the ruling more than the actual thing that they're ruling. Yeah. Checks out. Right. Checks out. It's but also you could love ruling. I love it. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> ruling. Ruling. <laughs> Rules, rules, oh jeez, oh god, I'm ruling right now. I'm about to rule. Right, I decree. But also, sorry, what we're talking about. <laughs> at the same time, at the same time, they love ruling. You could be a benevolent ruler too. I'll do anything to keep this shit. I'll do any. What do you guys want? What makes you happy? Uh, mm. You can have it. I don't care. You know what I'm saying? Okay. Or, or he could even be like uh, somewhere more based, like really enjoy the job. And I also really like taking care of people. And I love taking care of people. But man, there's just something about this job. I'm so happy every fucking day. I'm happy to be a servant to you. You know what I'm saying? There's a potential for like the love of the job not to necessarily be a corrupt thing. But maybe. maybe, maybe. Like loving to rule? <laughs> you were saying? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah, like if that feel if you had that feeling you just displayed about your job every fucking day, <laughs> the world might be a better place. <laughs> feel like that on your way to work, right? Right. <laughs> I'm about to work. Oh shit! Yeah, yeah. So like, really, really enjoy what you do, but that doesn't necessarily make you corrupt. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I see what you're saying. It's like, yeah, if someone loves to rule, I guess maybe I guess what, what yeah. aspects of it do you love, or you know, maybe it does though. What about it, that's the question. Now that I'm like really evaluating it, okay, get in there. What's the question? Does loving the job more than loving the people innately make you corrupt some way? 
Because maybe you're supposed to love the people more than anything. You know what I'm saying? Maybe it's like the ideal. Like missing the mark. If you're not loving the people more than the job. Isn't that in that job particularly, right? Or like ruling someone? Or like being like a in charge? Like a CEO or a fucking lord or a king? Right. You, ha- you really have to love the people more than the job? Is that is that a pure requirement? Maybe, right? I guess we were talking about that with dictators. Yeah. It might it might be a cornerstone of defining a leader. A true leader. Yeah. Someone who loves the people. I guess because what are the, yeah, what are the, in that sense, you even broaden it out. It's like, they love the people. Okay, well, what does that even mean? They, they love, not like the people necessarily, but maybe like the a prosperous community is what they love and what they want more than anything. And it's like wanting that more than anything would just naturally ascend you to a point of leadership and like power just because like you really want that. Yeah, I could see that. Yeah, that's that checks out with like Ragnar and Vikings because he's like ultimately what his rise to power is because he wants to go explore because he wants to like get more wealth so that they can live like a better life as a community. He's like, mm-hmm. as a community, we always travel to Spain. Why aren't we traveling to the unknown land? It's like Spain is just like not great anymore. Let's go to the unknown land instead. That's the best thing for like us as a people. Yeah. And then that rises him to leadership. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. I want our people to experience more. I want us to prosper more or whatever. Right. Expand. A prosperous reign. Yeah. Just good interaction, I guess. What the fuck? What, what is a, what's a thriving community look like? It's like, I want that. Right. That'd be, I think that's maybe a prerequisite. So then everyone would have a different picture of what a thriving community would look like. True. That's where it gets a little Loving the people is such a strange place to be. You know what I'm saying? Like, it's easy to love the people until one of your people, like, murders a bunch of people. Then, like, how much do you love him? More than, or less than the people that he murdered. (laughs) Yeah. Right? (laughs) And it's like, should you kill that guy? Is that, like, loving him? Is that loving the people? Probably. (laughs) <laughs> probably take his fucking head off doc if he's like sitting there at the trial like I'll kill you all I hate this place you're a terrible king I'll burn you down they deserve it I'll burn you to the ground right what do you, how do you even handle that guy if you're not gonna kill him yeah what's the other what's the alternative throw him in a cell throw him in a prison right right having a prison golly having a prison break must be terrible whoa <laughs> Whoa. Just all the psychopaths. <laughs> Criminy. Back into society. Criminy, <laughs> dude. Watch out. Oh, God. Watch yourselves. Yeah. No, yeah. Bro, that's scary. <laughs> <laughs> that's fucking scary, dude. I don't want to think about that. <laughs> <laughs> he says a king, right? Yeah, it'd be way easier to kill him than to ever have to think about that. Yeah, just fucking put him out. Take him out. Oh, man. Yeah, it's rough. Rough. What were we talking about before all this? We're talking about Kim Jong Un being a king and being a dictator. We're really trying to define how how important love is and how family based love is. Okay, yeah, if you love the people, yeah, yeah. Because loving the people ultimately, how much does it help you? If you're a CEO, you have a bunch of people underperforming. It's like I love them for sure. They're great. I I empathize with them. I I know them. I understand where they're at in their life and what they're capable of and what they're not capable of, what they can handle, what they can't handle, and like. This is not what I envisioned for what we're supposed to be doing right now. You know? Mm-hmm. It's like, you what? gotta let them go. You gotta let them go for your self love. Okay. So there's priorities and things that shift in. Right. I think so. That, that makes line. sense. That's one problem I have. Yeah. I just have, I feel that. It's like, ah. Uh, yeah. Cause if I'm, well, if I'm the CEO and we're going down a path where it's like, all right, we're not fucking performing, we're not doing it. It's like, ultimately, they're gonna lose their job anyway. Like, you know what I'm saying? If I, if I fire them or not, they're losing their job if we continue on this path. Right. How do you mean? It's like if, if we're just all underperforming like across the board. Oh. Like, right? You know what I'm saying? Oh. Oh. <laughs> we're fucked. Your we're job's fucked. on the line regardless. We're not making any money. Yeah. Like, it's not like, then the conversation would turn from, like, I have to let you go. It would still be, I have to let you go. It's like, actually, actually, I don't have to let you go. Like, we are, all of us are getting let go. Right. It's all done. Right. It's like, ah, oh, shit. So if I'm like the in charge of that company, I can't let that come. I can't let that happen. Right. You know what I'm saying? Destruction's like inevitable. Yeah. I need to be able to, for everyone else's sake or whatever, if it's only like one, a couple, a couple people underperforming or whatever, the metrics are not being met. Right. It's like, ah, we got to let those people go. It's like for the safety and foundation of like the core of who's keeping us going. Right. 
like the rest of the, the business, the rest of the people who are doing their job and depend on this job. It's like, it sucks. It sucks. I got to let you go. I got to let you go. Right. But I kind of, I have to, you know what I'm saying? Right. I guess then when I guess that's kind of like self love to a, to a little bit of a degree at least, but also for the general, it's like overall health of the organization. Right. It's like ah, we can't do this, man. We can't let this shit go. We gotta go. You gotta go. <laughs> <laughs> right. And and that's that's transcendent of love in that moment. That's not a love decision. Love for that individual. Right. Right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You're not like at that one particular moment. I believe in you. I'm giving you a second chance right now because I love you. Like, at some point, at some point, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, 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 yeah. At some point, it's like, if, if that's what I'm saying, there's an issue with being like, hold on, I love this person. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. It's like. At what point do you bench your favorite fantasy player? <laughs> yeah, right? At <laughs> like, what point do you drop them from the team? Right, right. Ooh. Your first round draft pick. Mm. And it's just, it's terrible. Yeah, first round draft pick. It's week nine. He's had a. Never, never broken ten points. You've got a small bench, a small bench. He's a couple getting... bye weeks coming up. Oh, some waiver wire pickups looking pretty promising. Some injuries happening. It's like, ooh, <laughs> I had to drop that guy. My favorite player. My favorite player. Dude, but he's dropping duds. He's dropping goose eggs. Yeah, it's a butt sandwich. You gotta let him go. <laughs> you gotta let him go. Yeah. For the good of the team. I love him. None of our teams going to playoffs if yeah. we're continuing on this path. No one gets to go to playoffs. No one. Right. But so then make some moves. This love feeling is transcendent of decision making then. Hmm. It's 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 incorporated, infused, but it's just larger than it's it's actual definition exists at a different scale from like making fantasy football decisions or firing people at a company. You know what I'm saying? Like you can love somebody and it's not like I don't, it's, it's bigger than making choices here and there. You know what I'm saying? Cause you could fire someone and realize it's a mistake and you could still love them. You know what I'm saying? You could have loved them the whole time. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Like love isn't necessarily like the, the driving force of like choice making per se. It's just like infused in the inspiration that is choice making itself. And then I think maybe <laughs> without the Whoa. inspiration to, in our choice making, maybe our choices are so poor that we're a more conquerable country. Or well, I don't know why they're trying to take mm, take mm -hmm, the family mm -hmm. base out to remove love as one of the inspirers for choice making. Why would they do that? Why would Ooh. anybody do that? You yeah. know what I'm saying? Yeah, I guess what would be the consequence, or what, what would happen if we did do that? What would it look like? Uh, probably a whole collapse. Bunch of, a whole bunch of people not letting love influence their choices. Right. A whole bunch of psychopaths. Right. It's like I want to I want to get mine. I'm going to get it while the getting's good. Yeah, I don't know what Russian community is like. You no know one's wanting to do honest business or pay honest work or be in an honest relationship or mm. it's like, hmm. Trying to envision what that society looks like. I wouldn't want to live there. Fuck that. Fuck I'm that. chill, dog. I'm pretty chill, dog. Fuck that, bro. You should like don't have any honest relationships. You don't get to experience trust and love, and those things are like, yeah. Why are all the movies and all the art about it? You know what I'm saying? Why is why is it one of the things that goes into choice making? You know what I'm saying? Yeah, it's like one of the most beautiful things we have for sure. Certainly, Dude, love is it. Yeah, love's the one. Yeah, it's like the like a base. Yeah, it's like one of the base things that we get to experience. Yeah. Like, I think it maybe might be like a trigger to let us know that we're like alive or part of it. Pain for sure. Or it's like, you're real. You know, like this is like a, I'm, it's real in a sense enough for you to perceive things and to feel things and to like have action reaction. Yeah. And like your emotions and also physical for sure as well. So it's, I don't know. Yeah. Love's like the big one, bro. Love and pain. Love and pain for sure. I think, yeah, Jordan Peterson has definitely mentioned that. It's like pain is like what's the most what's the most foundationally true reality? It's like pain. Like you can't you can't argue that. You can't argue it away. You can't. It's like if you're feeling pain, it's like you're in pain. That shit's real. At least to you. Yeah. At least in that moment when it's happening, it's real enough. Yeah. To like make you feel a certain way. It's like, oh, this fucking sucks. Things like, yeah, I think love is more transcendent than that. It's even deeper. It's even bigger than that. If you look look past the pain.
Love might be the most true foundational thing that there is. And we're born out of that. But yeah, maybe a society that doesn't have that as like a presupposition or like a running theory of like how to be like a, a person. It's like, you just carry love in your heart. It's like, going to carry you through a lot of situations. It'll get you through. 99% of shit. Just be like a loving person. And when, when it's not reciprocated, it's like have faith that it's, it's all going to be work. It's all going to work for good. It's all fucking faith and belief based. But so maybe a society that doesn't have that love and faith and belief based, it's going to be a way different place to live. I guess they could still be, because there's little atheists out there who are like good people, quote unquote. Like they're chill. Treat, treat, treat people with love and respect. That's it. You, don't, you ain't got to be like religious to do that. Yeah. Sure. Right. I think one of the, maybe like the other thing about these honest, respectful, loving choices and priorities that you have is that they're just more true. Like they're literally like a better, like taking myself almost like the matrix out of what we think the world is. And maybe like, for instance, when America was fighting, you know, in World War II, like the foundation of what we believed in and what was like important to us and like the, I mean, I say like Western Christian based culture, but I mean like this cookie cutter house, job, family, have kids, this like American culture that we built. Like that thing was just like metaphysically, foundationally more true and more worth fighting for. And it like helped us to win the war by forces outside of our own control. You know what I'm saying? Mm. So maybe that's one reason why they're always fighting against that is because you can't ever beat it. Like you could never get to the, you, you can't dominate the world. Like your presuppositions and your ideals are just too flawed. And as long as we stand for like love and like stand up and do the right thing and like have this like real thing that we're pursuing then you can never actually beat us. You can't like, you can oppose us for sure. But like this, th this thing that we represent will always beat you. And so you're coming after the thing that we represent and trying to take it away from us so that we don't represent it anymore. Yeah. So that maybe you could one day actually dominate us. Mm. But I think that that's the thing about like the hero or the protagonist always like finding its way to be the protagonist is like, they represent something that's more true and more real. Yeah, buddy. Yeah. That's it. Like that love frequency is like, <laughs> it's too big, bro. You're a little like, it's like not the same. Like, yeah, it doesn't vibrate the same. No, nah, it's like, yeah, fighting with different weaponry. Right, right. It's like you're fighting with fucking sticks and stones. Yeah. And we got love guns. Right. <laughs> and just imagine like two the militaries are like coming at each other and they're outnumbered 30 to one and they're never going to do it. And then like an earthquake happens and the whole 30 to one military, like the big military just collapses into the earth and then they r route them and they win right afterwards. It's like the idea of that, it sounds silly and like something maybe you'd see in like biblical, a biblical story, right? <laughs> yeah. Literally. But I think that that's just like that when we're talking about all of these very real things, that, that thing resonates with me. Like, why is the love thing important? Why is it, you know, why is, why would we, why would they care so much about taking it away from us? You know, mm. because it's like a superpower. Like, I don't think that they can physically beat us in this realm if they represent bullshit. Yes. They right? can. Yeah. Like, I'm sorry. As long as I'm <laughs> able to articulate and stand on and be like, doing the, the, the quote unquote right thing. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Truth and love. Right. If I'm able to identify those things and articulate those things freely, like, which I am, or like I can, you know what I'm saying? If I'm fucking put me in a, put me in a cell, whatever, <laughs> right. lock me down, solitary confinement. That might be a little different. That might be a little fucked up. But they I, still do that got, to I still got God. You know what yeah. I'm saying? Because it's always just me and God. That's it. None of y'all are real. Like yeah. As far as real as that is, like the thing that's generating my experience is way more real than anything that's happening in my experience that's being generated. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And maybe they're we're all they're maybe they're fighting at the generated experience level. And like you can't even fucking touch my generator, dog. Like you know, like you can like try to kill my character, but like I'm Master Chief. I'll just respawn, bro. I'm just like fucking come back tomorrow. Yeah. Da, 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 da. Yeah. Coming back, I'm good. You keep telling yourself that, well, you sit 30 days in the hole. <laughs> you tell yourself that a lot. Nothing's real than me Every and my day. generator. Me and God. <laughs> just me and God here in this cell right now, boy. That's all it's ever been. For 30 That's days. That's all it's ever going to be. That being said, I have no fucking doubt that you could get through that. <laughs> I think there would be some weird physical things that happen. Like you'd start to be delusional a little bit and you'd be like fighting with your own brain a little bit because you'd be so deprived. 
Yeah, it's I can't even sunlight. imagine. Nah, there's some weird fucking some weird shit would psychedelic happen. shit going on. Some weird shit would happen. I also think you could meditate through it. I think so too. That's what meditate. That's what the monks do. They fucking <laughs> they always be doing that shit. They'd be reading and meditating, reading and meditating. Yeah, you'd have to like find if you could find a way to pop out of yourself, like fucking the one yogi. What's his name? The one that's on Joe Rogan all the time. Uh, Sadguru. Sadguru talks about if you could just find a way to pop. I think that might be the right stimulus. You know what I'm saying? You're in the hole for 30 days. You're just like, nope, I'm coming out. Whoosh. Yeah, <laughs> might be the right thing to do it. I'll see y'all in a month. <laughs> Seriously, <laughs> it would definitely be some psychedelic esque experiences to that. But... Oh yeah, oh yeah, that would be fucking trippy. What you're saying is true because you'll respawn. So in 30 days, sure, maybe you're fucking crazy in 29 days. Sure, maybe bash it crazy at 30 days. You're banging your head on the wall and shit, <laughs> and they pull you out and then they put an IV in you and get you some Tylenol, and then like two, three, four, five, six, seven days pass, like. You're going to be you again. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. They can't really like hold it down forever. And I also think the forces that be, God, for instance, what doesn't let that happen to people. There's always a fucking shish, little story action. Someone left the door open, you know? <laughs> the nurse didn't want to give the guy the meds anymore. Like whatever it is, you know what I'm saying? Like there's a, some little wiggle of love and Something truth. Something maybe pulling us to respect love and truth. And yeah. Yeah. Pulling us in that direction just like inherently. Right. Like, yeah, like gravity. What is, yeah, like gravity. It's like, we know what that is. You know what the fucking, and you know what the wrong thing is for sure. You do. You watch enough movies, you know. You fucking know. You know. If you're watching the movie of your own life, what they what they should do and what they shouldn't do. When you're watching any TV show, you're like, oh my God, how's he going to act? He shouldn't do that. He's going to fucking do it. He's in, he did it. I fucking knew it. You know what I'm saying? It's like, oh, what a piece of shit. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Yep. I knew it. It's weird. Yeah, it's a strange little gravitational pull towards love and truth. I think. That conscious or that fucking, maybe not even a voice for some people, but just like a feeling. Yeah. Because everyone has like a voice in their head or like they can talk to themselves in their head. Some people don't. It's a percentage. It's low. They don't have any... They Allegedly. Can't like, they can't even like read. <laughs> they, can say they can only read aloud. I'll chat GBT it right now. I think, I guess, yeah, some people are, maybe you think I'm referring to like the, like a Jiminy Cricket or like something trying to tell you. Right. Like but everyone has like a voice in their, or like a, can generate a voice in their head. That's what thinking is. This is going to fuck you up a right? little bit, dude. Oh, don't fuck me up. <laughs> Studies suggest that approximately 30 to 50% of people do not experience inner speech, meaning they don't have a constant voice in their head as many others do. 30 to 50%. Who are y'all? Who are y'all? Who, who's on the survey? Who's on this survey? <laughs> who are y'all getting these people? I'll ask you. What the hell? For this study, and I'll also say this. So they can't read silently. Feels jarring. Yeah. <laughs> for someone with a voice in their head. I'm jarred. <laughs> My man's jarred over you here. You put me in a jar. Voice in their head. Does that mean they cannot read silently or what else? What other kind of things you do with this inner voice? Think. Yeah. <laughs> Think in words th through inner thoughts. Because if that's true, then that's absolutely fucking bonkers. There's no way that people just can't think. Or I guess what what would their thinking be to them? Just thinking in pictures. So I guess the study kind of was, uh, I said one of the most notable researchers in this area was this psychologist Russell T. Hurlbert, who used a method called descriptive experience sampling, and this involves participants carrying a beeper that goes off at random times, prompting them to record what is going on in their mind at that moment. So then, wait, what? <laughs> Beep. Nothing. <laughs> <laughs> right? That doesn't really... Beep. Writing down nothing. <laughs> <laughs> right? What are you talking about? It's important to note that <laughs> lacking a constant inner voice doesn't mean someone cannot read silently or think in words. People without a constant inner monologue may rely on other forms of cognition like visual thinking, abstract reasoning, or other non-verbal forms of thought. They might still think in words when necessary, like during complex problem solving, but they may not have a persistent verbal stream of consciousness. 
for Simon or others who experience a continuous inner dialogue, the idea that others don't have this experience can be surprising. But thinking without an inner voice doesn't imply a deficiency. It simply reflects the diversity of cognitive styles. Those without an inner voice can still engage in verbal thought when required, but their default mode of thinking might not be verbal. Similarly, silent reading is still possible. But Okay, that's what I'm saying. It may involve more visual or conceptual processing than the hearing the words internally. Okay. Okay. So there's something to it. Yeah, that makes more sense. Or at least I'm not like, what the fuck? They can't even like think in their own mind or can't even like read. It's like, well, no, there's no way. But I guess it's just saying that there's not, or they don't have that. It's like a, a narrator going, like saying, what, not even saying what's happening. Because I guess I, I would classify myself as someone who does have like an inner voice, like yeah. an inner monologue going on. Me too. Because I'm like thinking about what I'm doing or, you know what I'm saying? Or what needs to be done. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Well, I'm thinking, yeah. This is where the world is. Right. This is it's where all in my dome. I organize it What here. are y'all talking about? Yeah. You don't have a dome organizer? Yeah, what are you talking about? And it says they did. Like, even if they don't have, like, the verbal por- portion, they yeah, might they have they different cognitive recognition or ex- expression. It said they might use Im- visuals, like yeah, images, pictures. or abstract methods. What the fuck does that mean? Fucking 3D chess in their mind? Yeah, something like Just that. perceiving the world differently? <laughs> like, what the fuck? Yeah. I would think it's pretty normal to have I'm like fucking weird what because you have your your thoughts like your dialogue or your monologue yeah for sure and then I think sometimes there's a, there's a dialogue going on mm. whenever it becomes a dialogue from the monologue that's how I'm like whoa 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 this shit's getting crazy y'all this shit's getting deep out here mm. but some people don't even have the monologue like no what 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 are you talking about maybe they just have like story they have a different monologue because yeah we have to be perceiving our story I guess maybe like some artists might be like that or people who are like painters or sculptors well, I'm trying to think what it looks like like if you just wake up and you're not going to talk to yourself and you just know what you have to do like alright going to work <laughs> I love the song even when <laughs> <laughs> like I guess maybe that's life to some people you know even whenever saying? you're doing stuff though you still have to think like, about it think about it a little bit you know what I'm saying you're not just like fucking blindly moving around here and flailing things you're like we're at we're not pinpoint accurate, but we're pretty precise with our movements. Like yeah. everyone, like when you're putting your fucking keys in your car, and you're like, you miss it a couple of times. You're like, hold on, what the fuck? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, get in there. Like, you think that, you know what I'm saying? And then you act it out. Yeah, yeah you're right. You're right. Yeah, like they think. I know they think. I know they think. Yeah. Like, don't don't tell me they don't think. They might not have that second part, or like where like, it comes into a dialogue, and you're able to like perceive a Jiminy Cr- Christmas in your fucking head. Right. And you're like, whoa. Like, I feel like I'm. When Pastor Ed talks about, I got like a fucking something as God dropped a message in my mailbox. Like, I know what that feels like. And I know what it feels like to come across coincidences enough times to feel that same feeling of like, my experience becomes a, a, a fucking dialogue. Or it becomes a, a movie that someone's watching. And I know that they're watching it. You know what I'm saying? Or it's yes. like knowing that you're on camera. Or like knowing that you're streaming live. And it just says one because you're the only one watching. And then it goes to two. And you're like, oh, shit. There's someone else in the chat. Yeah. <laughs> Me and the G guy. Yeah. That's hard. Like, not everyone can have that. Yeah. Or, I, think, I think everyone can have that. Developed. Not everyone does have that. Right. So I think maybe, or I guess I was just trying to conceptualize the entire question we were even posing in the first place. I was like, what? People don't have, like, even the first thing? Like, I understand, like, not, not the second part. Like, not like the, they could see someone enter their chat in their live stream of life. Like, I'd see that sometimes. But they don't even have, like, the... How do they get through the live stream? Like, how do they do anything? Yeah. Like, no, they have to think. Yeah. They have to think. For sure. They got to read. Right. Right. But as they're reading, they don't say, I was running down the dialogue and then I came to a point where I was moving to the trees and I was, I feel like that is how I read. You know what I'm saying? What do you mean? Like, I read, well, it happens when I'm reading sometimes, I go into that place where I'm just like purely daydreaming. Looking over the words, like. Yeah, reading with your eyes, but not with your mind. Not at all, right? Like yeah. I have it's like, this... what the fuck did I just read? Right, I, I didn't retain any of that. I just saw words on the page. No, well, there's that time too, but there's another okay. time where I'm reading it and like I'm so I've painted the scene in my head so well, or I'm so locked into what this mental image of what the scene would be like that like I'm not I'm no longer taking in the words with my do to do. I'm just I'm reading it, yes, but like it's just playing out in this image in my head. It's like a movie, like yeah, mental movie. It definitely. And then I'll like get to the end of the page, and I gotta like come back to like reality and be like, and then I gotta like keep it going, and then hopefully like I don't get like 
But when I start reading, it's never just immediately like I'm in the fucking zone with in the world, right? Mm -hmm. But like the fifth Harry Potter, I've every time I reread that book, by the time I'm in the middle of it, I'm literally just like. (laughs) (laughs) I remember, um, I remember the the book Ender's Game did that to me when I was a kid, Mm -hmm. and then they made a movie about it, and it was kind of trippy because like you've got this like mental image, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, like what how you drew everything. Mm -hmm. I remember one thing that tripped me out is that with Harry Potter, how I envisioned dobby up here was like exactly how he looked in the movie i was like fucked up i was like did i see this somewhere else like how whoa tapped in did they describe it really well like i don't know if that's what happened but like i swear that's what was in my head it's crazy that's that's like a good like casting you know yeah right (laughs) casting is they hit that bitch on the nose right and like Harry Potter himself or Daniel Rad- Radcliffe, right? He's pretty close, right? He's like on the money, dude. I think he's on the money. Later, later in this, the movies, he gets a little old, but at first, it's like pretty fucking perfect, dude. You know? I think so. Yeah. Then they crushed that. Game of Thrones does a really good job with their casting as well. Really? They hit that bitch. Nice. They hit that shit righteous. Fucking nice. Yes, dude. Yeah, Harry's a. Uh... It's a little weird when he's like, all like pouty, like we got to do the right thing. Out of my way, Weasley. You know, well, he doesn't say that, but <laughs> Ron, you pussy. <laughs> Come on, Ron. There's the times where he's Come a bitch. Yeah, his uh, the way that he expresses his nobility or like his charisma or like his like entrenchment and doing the right thing, you know, like passion. Sometimes I don't feel the passion coming out of Harry. Mm. It's more like, well, that's not. It's also it's like more analytic or science science based or something like that. I don't know. Anyways, we're just fucking debating the nitty gritties of the <laughs> wizarding world over here. Harry Potter, you're a wizard. Books, though. But it tripped me out when I was a kid to be, like, able to realize, I was like, Mom, sometimes I'm reading, and I'm, like, in the book. You know what I'm saying? I'm not, like, reading the words anymore. And she's like, that's fine, right? That's what books are supposed to do. <laughs> that's bro. why books are lit. <laughs> that's why books are crazy lit. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And I was like, okay, that's cool. Like, a good book you should do that to you, right? Yeah. But imagine if you just thought like that all the time. That's why I'm like, is that how these people think? They're just like, I'm like here looking at everything all the time. And sometimes I daydream outside of myself and I get to like higher frequencies and I'm like feeling the feelings of things that aren't here. But like maybe they're just like some kind of abstractly daydreaming their way through their life. Yeah, I guess maybe you're right. They're more visual as verbal thinkers. Because I, I think that's a that's a question I've heard before. Like, are you a verbal or like a visionary thinker? It's like some most people are both, but some people probably lean one way more so than the other. I definitely think in words for sure, both, but definitely words is my primary. Yeah, it's weird. What's my thoughts like right now? Like, I I um I ask myself, I'm like, do I think in words? Am I thinking in <laughs> words right now? And then I'm like, I started drawing words with my mind's eye, like purple letters. It's like, this is with words. And then (laughs) I started laughing at myself while I was doing that. Mm. And I'm like, well, there's not real dialogue for the self that's laughing at the self. I don't see that speech like a closed caption, you know what I'm saying? But it's there thinking something, you know what I'm saying? It's there giving a response, a reaction. Mm. But like, you ever seen Dexter, right? Yeah. Then Dexter, he's like walking and he's like, I love the smell of roses in the morning. But he's like not talking, but it's like his internal dialogue, right? Mm-hmm. Like that thing is like, when you're watching it, you're like, this is so fucking tight. This is so fucking tight. And I feel like there's definitely times where I'm doing that, right? Is that what we're talking about when we say like uh, internal dialogue? Yeah. Right? Yeah. Yeah. Thinking with words, mm-hmm. but not the visual words. Mm-hmm. Yes. Because words to me mean like but words on page. Okay. I see what you're saying. Right. We're thinking in text. <laughs> <laughs> right. We're not thinking text. We're thinking words up here. Yeah, I think thinking in text would be more more visual. <laughs> <laughs> That's weird, though. It's a picture of a word. <laughs> right, okay. I had, to, I had to splice that wire open because it was confusing to me on what we meant. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I see what you're saying. This whole thing we're doing is crazy. This whole experiencing <laughs> things is crazy. Trying to define it. It's bonkers. Yeah. It's bonkers. We're just, we're just plunging in, bro. We're just plunging into the Matrix, baby. <sighs> Remember when I was a kid, I was trying to think two thoughts at once. Did you ever play that game? I don't think so. <laughs> you have to like devise a way to be able to think two things at once. So I'd be like, okay, I'm going to say Buffalo Bills over and over and over again. And then I'm going to think of a hot wing at the same time. Buffalo Bills, Buffalo Bills, Buffalo Bills. I think I did it just now. But like, then I'd be like, okay, how do I get to three? You know what I'm saying? And then in my own mind's eye, I would start to like have like a longer, slower thought out here. And then a thought that's like a thumper. 
And then I'd be like, then you just got to think one thing while that's going on. You know what I'm saying? Okay. And then I would do that while I'm just like sitting there watching TV and shit. <laughs> like fucking bored in my own head. <laughs> Let me play with my thoughts. Yeah. Let me play with thinking and stuff. <laughs> I don't... That's a meta shit. That's a meta shit, kid. <laughs> Thanks, bro. I, I kind of thought we were all doing weird stuff like that. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? I don't think so. Sitting around thinking about shit. You I don't know? think so. <laughs> That's cool. That's cool. I definitely, one other weird thing for sure with thinking that I did when I was a kid was I would, one of my favorite things, like straight up favorite things to do was to take a long, hot shower. And so I would wake up like 30 to 45 minutes. It started with 30. And then I got to where I was like, if I get up even earlier, I'd have even more time. <laughs> and I'd go into the bathroom while everybody's sleeping, turn on the shower, you know, set it up then turn off the lights and then creep into the shower and then lay there and just fucking think, bro. And like, it was so fun. I remember feeling like I can really think in this bitch. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Like charging up my thinking stat right here. Like power uh, training thinking. It got to a point where if I was in the car thinking about a problem that I couldn't quite like work my head around, how would I even, you know what I'm saying? Okay. Like, um, I got to take this to the shower. <laughs> I just stick it, to, just stick attack in that. When I get to the, back to the shower place, we'll work that one out. Oh, that that, that thought's getting tackled in the shower. <laughs> Taking a thought down. That was like a legit, a That's legit crazy. That's awesome. Yeah, but that was kind of weird behavior. Not weird behavior, but like, atypical. Atypical for sure. Not common. It stands out to me in my own film <laughs> as like kind of a weird thing. I still love a shower, but I don't really do that anymore. Mm-hmm. Shower yeah, was like a meditative yeah. practice right there. You know what I'm saying? That was like. Meditation, action, like relax, relaxation. It's like a, also do, like you said, you're doing it in the morning. Yeah. You know, when you're like kind of your brain is already in that sort of like not fully awake state quite yet. So yeah. you, you still have a little bit of that, that juice, that DMT juice right. or whatever's going on with like other, whatever generates our creative or our crazy like dreams. Yeah. Whatever generates those things, it's like still, your brain's still in that dreaming frequency a little bit when you first wake up. Right. So if you're getting that bitch in there, then you're it's like jumping back into that place, like in that already kind of susceptible state. Right. You probably some high level thinking in there. Going ham. Some th- thinkitation in that bitch. Yeah. Yeah. It's also easier to explain to people why I was sh- had the lights off in your shower for 45 minutes. <laughs> no one was awake. What are you doing in there? <laughs> He's been in the 40, 40 minutes. <laughs> We're gonna be late. <laughs> I know the lights are off. <laughs> what the fuck's he doing in there? How old were you? <laughs> like seven, eight years old. Oh my god! The obvious suspect was masturbation. It's too young, dude. I'm telling you, it's purely just. I was thinking, dude. Just thinking, dude. Thinking my ass off. <laughs> well, I bet you were thinking, boy. I bet you were thinking real hard. <laughs> You know, but, uh, there's, uh, there's, uh, that's so crazy. When, when did it, so it started around seven and eight. When did you, when did it become a not a common practice anymore? The weird thing is seven and eight's when I know it was in full swing. Hey, no, I think I, that's when I figured out the lights off was better. Okay. Because in the morning, the the lights hurt your eyes a lot. Yeah. So it started off just be, being like, oh, I don't want to fucking deal with that. And then I realized like the feeling of just like being able to exist in the dark for a second when you're tired. And you can open your eyes and it doesn't hurt. And I was like, oh, this is a more like relaxed state right here. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Like this would be a more enjoyable like shower experience. And then it, I realized that like in the dark, you can like stop feeling your body. You know what I'm saying? And mm. just be like kind of all up here. Moment, yeah, all mental. Almost like broaden that screen a little bit. And then that's when I was like, oh, I can like really think in this bitch. Like I remember I was trying to figure out this when I was in school yesterday and I couldn't figure it out. And I was just like. I could do like this or I could do like this. And then once I realized that you could just start being like, what about this? Or maybe this way. I was like, that's crazy. Mm -hmm. The ability to do that is nuts. But when did it stop becoming common practice? So it's like definitely a cyclical thing, like where I built up to that point. And then, man, when I was in high school, I used to wake up in the morning. And at that point, I figured out even cooler what you could do is you could turn the tub on first, fill it up about halfway, and then turn the shower on. Cause then you're like warm on the bottom, and you got water hitting there you on top. You go. It evolved, bro. <laughs> it evolved, bro. <laughs> That's next level, bro. <laughs> right? Okay. Wake up like 30 minutes before I had to get out. The like 30 minutes before I would have woken up to get ready, and then take like a nice little think shower. But the problem is, is that in high school it got to a point where I would sleep a lot, 
like it wasn't as pure. I was so tired that I would just be like, sometimes I'd set up, set an alarm just in case, and then I'd be like, ow, and just take a in the shower, <laughs> in the shower tub. Just take a nap. <laughs> take a nap. In the shower tub. I wake up all disoriented and soggy. And I'm like, I'll prune up. <laughs> God damn it. <laughs> exactly, exactly. Okay, so continue through high school. Yeah, I would say through high school, yeah. Wow. And then let's just definitely when I was in college, there was a point when I was living at Arnold where I wanted to like fucking kick it in the shower, bro. <laughs> like what the fuck, bro? <laughs> but we had like communal was, showers. Yeah, it was bro. community bathrooms in some of the dorm rooms. Right? Mm-hmm. So at one point I took like a fucking like a stepping stool. That okay. like an unfolding stepping stool. Got it. And then like there was like a bigger shower cuz it was not like Jackson. Y'all showers were like stalls, installed stalls, or you know what I'm saying? Yeah. But this was like stall scenario, but there was like, I think just two showers in our bathroom. And one was like a little bit smaller. And the other one was like pretty big, bro. Like maybe from like the edge of the table there to like the wall here was like the whole shower. Nice. And so, I, but it was mostly like concrete all the way around with like a small curtain for an entry. So I just turned on the shower, brought that stepping stool in there, put the music up on top. Chilling, bro. <laughs> fucking chilling. Just like a sauna. That's why the sauna is so nice, I think. You know? I love the sauna, boy. Right? Mm-hmm. Chilling, bro. But then it was just kind of weird sometimes. Someone comes in to take a shit. You're like butt ass naked, fucking <laughs> chilling. <laughs> just thinking. I got a snack. I got some funyuns. I'm like, <laughs> chilling, bro. Oh, no. So it's weirder in a public setting, right? A little bit. <laughs> I realize that. A little bit. College is where you find yourself. I realize that. I'm like, okay, well, I can't really do this here. Mm-hmm. But I would say, like, when we were at U Heights and we got super fucked up, the morning after me getting super fucked up with that hangover, need a dark shower. That was a go to. I mean, that was a go to for you for sure. <laughs> yeah, do it, bro. I'll be back at 20. I got to get out of here. Yeah, yeah. So there's like, uh, it, it changed in my life, you know what I'm saying? But mm-hmm. I'm the purest, like, the coolest was when I realized it could be a thinking chamber. And that was like around seven, eight, nine years old. That's awesome. Yeah, that shit was tight. I, and diff. now I've definitely, I haven't laid down to take a dark shower since like fucking uh, I never did it at Voss's place. Yeah, it had to be like right around 22, 23 when we left San Marcos. Situationally, it just got to where it was not like super viable. Mm. Yeah. <clears throat> I'm sure it'll rear. I'll, it'll make a comeback. For sure. We work out now too. So that's another opportunity for you to have like this like place where you're thinking more freely and less um, obligated. I think that's maybe maybe it never left. It just like changed its presentation. That's what you're saying. You know. Yeah. But as a kid, it's like hard to have. I don't know, seven or eight. I didn't quite know how to like step away from everything and just like just think and just work out things. You're always in the washing machine. Trying to get out of the washing machine is kind of hard when you're a kid. We, I couldn't smoke weed, you know what I'm saying? Mm. <laughs> I needed some kind of way to... <laughs> couldn't transcend. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I was just stuck in my kid body. <laughs> yeah. It's like, golly, it's hard to think sometimes. <laughs> and then boom, that thinking chamber, bro. That's crazy. Yeah. yeah, it's cool. That's awesome. I remember thinking it's like knots. Like, you ever try to get a knot out of like your fucking... Like a rope like, or whatever, cable. A shoe, yeah. whatever it could be, you know? Mm-hmm. And you're like trying to figure out how, why well, can't I... What do I need to push and pull to get get it to do what i needed to do right and you gotta like find like where's this i used to where's the center of the knot how did this get knotted how did we get here you know what i'm saying i'm doing ancillary knot nine yeah. but like there's a fucking i need core knot two yeah. i need to undo core knot two and i'm good right and then i i was like that's the kind of shit that you got to think about in the thinking chamber as that was like a direct like translative thought was like knots like this like i don't think just like i'm frustrated right now and i can't get this knot undone and i want to just give up and do it later like that sometimes it's good to do that with your problems and not like give up on it, but just be like, I need, I need to go somewhere else to think about this. Cause I'm not able to like do it right now. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You need a fresh set of eyes, right? Fresh mind on it. Right. Yeah, so yeah, bro. dark shower change your life. That's crazy. A dark shower, bro. Fucking thinking plus two, like <laughs> get in there. <laughs> Fuck yes, uh, dog. We got to be deep in this thing. Oh yeah. I'll say we probably, we probably wind her down. We're like an hour 40, 40 plus. Can't wait until the day we get to do another hour 20. Just keep on pushing. Every fucking week. Every day. Do three hour pods. Come on. Get some guests on. Well, hell yeah. Thank y'all for joining in. Episode 60. Episode 60. 60 of them. Thanks, boy. We've come a long way. That's a lot. 
That's a lot of fucking pods, bro. That's over 60 hours. That's closer to 90 hours of content. Really? Yeah. Each one's like an hour and a half on average. You know what I like about it? It's original. This is an original thing. Oh, gee. I guess we're remaking Joe Rogan to some degree. But I think we're fresh. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. It's a a remake. It's a reboot. (laughs) Son of a bitch. (laughs) Fuck. Like new art. Fuck. No, no, no. no, It's a platform. It's all original thoughts. It's like trying to find a... Stream of consciousness. Yeah. Be like telling a movie maker. It's like, make a new form for the media. I don't want to watch movies anymore. Yeah, make a... It's like, out of all the stories you could tell, there's only 26 stories. It's like, I want a 27th. It's like, there's only 26. I'm sorry. (laughs) It's how it goes. Yeah. True. There's constraints. But within that, we're fucking golden. We're golden. OC all day. OC all day. OG content. OC OG. More content coming. More everything. Appreciate y'all for being along for the journey this long. Thank you. New office. New spot. Looking nice. I'm fucking with it. I'm fucking with it heavy. It's a vibe. I love it. It's a vibe. I hear passion for playing. We're right there. (laughs) And with that, we'll see y'all later. On the flip. Peace. Rolling through the city to the line show. Really ain't no telling where we might.